into today's episode, let's hear a quick word about our sponsor. In today's fast-paced world, having the right connection is more important than ever. Whether it's a personal relationship, a business partnership, or a mechanical fastener, the right connection can make all the difference. When it comes to mechanical fasteners, a weak or unreliable connection can lead to costly downtime, safety hazards, and even catastrophic failure. That's why it's crucial to choose the right fastener for the job and to ensure that it's installed correctly. Stay Fast Product Incorporated understands the importance of the right connection. That's why they offer a wide range of fastening solutions that are designed to provide the strength, durability, and reliability that you need. So don't settle for a weak or unreliable connection. Choose the right fastener for the job, the right people for your life, and experience the peace of mind that comes with knowing that your connections are strong and secure. It is Stay Fast privilege to serve their customers with the right connection. Yeah. I've been up so long, they look like up to me. They look up to me. What? I got fake people showing fake love, love to me. Straight up to my face. I forgot that song existed. Straight up to my face. That and Hotline Bling, to be honest. I be listening, I be listening to Hotline Bling every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> I was listening to a Millie. used to call me today. on my cell phone. A Millie, a Millie, a Millie, a Millie. A Millie. A Millie. Classic. Oh, man. All right, well, welcome to the Mutual Friend Podcast. I am Gabe. And I'm Dre. And I'm Matt. And today... What are we talking about, man? <laughs> gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, we talking about fake friends. Mm. Man. How many of us have them? <laughs> Classic. So, how do we define fake friends? That's an excellent place to start. Yeah. We start every conversation like this? I think there's <laughs> a good number of descriptions. So I'll just name one characteristic. People who do not have your best interest at heart, mm. but position themselves to appear as if they do. Mm. thought you were going to say friends who... Are fake. <laughs> that's, that's, <your laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> no, that's a good answer though. People who don't have uh, your best interests at heart. That yeah. was your that was your definition. That was. I feel like there's a lot of different aspects that go into being a fake friend. So mm. I feel like that's just one. You want to move your mic a little closer to you? Is that good? Yeah. All right, bet. Um, I was gonna say. People who put on the front of being in your corner, but they really aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, the first part's very important. Like, they try to, like, look like they are, but they're really not. I'm doing I'm doing so bad with the switching right now. But you got it. <laughs> reps. Reps build uh, confidence. Oh, I'll recover. Um, I would say they're just... They say they with you when they really not. Yeah. The streets left me with a heavy heart. That used to be my joint. Go ahead. I would say it's like they're, they're acquaintances that feel like they have a right to you. Mm. A little bit of a little bit of entitlement in there. Yeah, like like they're they're friends that like feel like you always should be there with them, even if they're not always there for you. So they kind of, they kind of, it's a little one sided the yeah. relationship. To me, that sounds more just like a bad friend more than a fake friend. Well, it's a different conversation. Differentiate. What's the difference? Like, what you're describing sounds like just someone who's just like toxic and it's just like draining to you. Mm -hmm. But like, when I'm thinking fake friend, I'm not saying this is right. I'm just saying like, what came to my mind? Which is people who, you know, they actually don't care about you for real. They're just, like I said, they're just there without having your best interest, like Matt said. Um, and usually, I feel like our 
are there to try to get something out of it for themselves, right? There's some selfish aspect of this whole thing. Low key, I think I've always just put them in the same box. Mm. Bad fake friends. Because mm. if you like, I only need real ones around me, you know. Mm. That's so what I'm I saying. guess they're like all they're all in like the same box to me. I guess. Maybe. Now that you say that. Yeah. So what makes a real friend or a good friend? Someone we can count on. <laughs> Someone you can lean on. We lean all on need me. somebody. No, no, no. That's not where I was I at. started, I though. I was at the top. Okay. We started the same time. My bad, my bad. Okay. Lean on me. When, when you're, you're not, not strong, strong, I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. And I'll help you carry on. Carry on. Yeah. Wait. It won't be long. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need oh. somebody to, to lean on. So just call, call on my brother. brother. <laughs> you we, go. we all need somebody <laughs> to lean on. Hey, we fire hey. for real. I thought you were about to rap a verse. Nah. I felt it coming. You like. Ah. I was like, oh shoot! I was feeling it a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now we, now the energy is here where it need to be. Yeah. What were we talking about? Friends. How many of us have them? Oh. Mutual. <laughs> that is that is the name of the podcast. That is. Oh, oh man! <laughs> but what? Someone you can trust. Mm. Someone you have mutual respect for. Come on. Uh, someone you can you know share a laugh with, and it's mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. not something. And it's never like, I don't even know what the word is, but like just a good friend. Like, I don't know. How about this? More specific question. In your life, right? Um, If you think of all your your best quality friends over your years of life, what made them or us <clears throat> so good compared to fake or bad friends? Consistency. Mm. Fire. That's good. Fire. So basically, it's like me personally, I don't need to speak to someone every week to consider them a friend. Like, I can go two, three months without talking or speaking to this person, but as soon as I see them, it's like nothing's changed. Right. Mm -hmm. But those friends that you like count on, like on your day to day, week to week, like, they're consistent in checking up on each other. Because, like, with me, a phone goes two ways. So if you're not reaching out to me, I'm not reaching out to you. And it's not that mm. I don't... Mm-hmm. It's not that I feel like I don't want to talk to you. Like, I don't mess with you for real. Like, that's not the case at all. It's just the phone goes both ways. Like, I'm focusing on what God's got me in right now. And right now, if you're not here with me, then I'm just don't see you. So, I'm just we're just not speaking, but it's not on. Forget this person terms. It's like I'm not cutting that person off. I'm just I'm literally just not speaking to them, how I used to, hmm. you know. And I feel like I am like solid at keeping up with people, but like, I I can trail off sometimes. But hmm. yeah, I think I'm pretty bad at that. Like, I hate phone calls. I. My messages delete after thirty days, but See, I still got like three hundred unread messages. See, I hate texting. I, I can I can do a call. Yeah. I hate texting with a passion. Your messages delete themselves. Yeah, after thirty days they expire. If I didn't, I'd probably have like five thousand. My, my son dirty, bro. You dirty. What are you talking about? It's <laughs> okay. Anyway, you know the, the tricks of the trade. I didn't know that. Yeah. Anyway, um, I just they call him incognito. <laughs> So for me personally, something that I say all the time to uh, the youth and when I like on one conversations and just with people in general, like in life, something that I've learned is that friendships and relationships, they come and go in seasons. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like if you don't talk to somebody anymore because they serve their purpose in your life for whatever season of life they were in. <laughs> Why are you smiling like you, that? You got what you needed out of them. No. 
God used them for whatever purpose that he had in your life. And you were able to pour into their lives at the season that you were in. And sometimes they come back in and out of your life. Sometimes the intensity of your friendship is different at certain times of life. Like there's been friends, there's friends that I still have now that at one point I was super close with. And now like we're still friends, but we're not as close as we used to be. Mm -hmm. exactly. And also there's friends that I barely talked to years ago, but now we're super tight. So like stuff happens. Like your friendships, they kind of go like this, like in seasons. Yeah. They go like how? Like that. <laughs> like, I can say there's very few people that, like, I just completely, like, have no contact with whatsoever. Like, on purpose. Like, I've never been one to block people or just, or, like, any mm -hmm. of that stuff. And I'm not saying that, like, people <clears throat> do that are, like, immature or anything. I'm just saying, like, it's not, it's just not, it's not necessary. Deep. It's, for not, me. That it's not that deep. You know, I've never had anybody do anything to me that was just so evil that like i felt the need to just completely cut them off like that now have people done that to me maybe actually yes for sure i know that i can think of somebody but hey it's what it is it's okay now, i haven't been the greatest in my whole life i've done things and said things to people that are warranted of being cut off so i've never it blocked works. anybody because i don't really believe in burning bridges it's mm -hmm. like it just is what it is Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not so mad that I need to make sure you can't contact me. It's like yeah. you're gonna get the message eventually, like exactly. just by the energy that I return to you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But kind of like, uh, kind of jumping back on the ship of uh, fake friends. Um, I think what boils what boils down what it boils down to for like what makes good friends is like genuineness. Mm -hmm. consistently like you said but like if someone is actually for you i feel like you can tell by the energy they give off like they're actually like putting an effort to the friendship and they help you without needing anything in return you can help them just for the sake of being good and like being a friend mm -hmm. um but i think this is how you can tell when people are being fake when they only hit you up for something and like that's it hit the hit Hit some type of button, because let the church say amen on that one. Yeah. Because, and, and, I'm not just trying to talk about other people. Uh, also for yourself. If you find yourself only hitting up certain people for something, like, I feel like you're being a fake friend. Mm. And so we should, like, check ourselves, right, to make sure that we're not doing that for other people. Like, we should actually just check in. Uh, with people just to see like how they are without needing something from them. So unless unless your relationship is already like set up that way, like if you already have like a business kind of relationship, like mm -hmm. where you literally do only hit that person up for that, then let it be that. But don't pretend like you guys are all buddy buddy. If yeah, that's not the case, yeah, in that situation, I would say y'all aren't friends. Yeah, right. you have a an understanding. Mm -hmm. You can be friendly. You can be cordial. Right. Right. But like actually being like friends friends you have a, a mutually beneficial agreement mm -hmm. mm, mutual not, not a friendship yeah yeah also i think the word friend is like thrown around a little too much honestly define define friend yeah uh i feel like um a friend is someone who actually Kind of like what we've been saying the whole time. It's just like genuinely there for you and you like mutually help each other out in multiple aspects of life. Um, someone you can count on, someone who's there consistently, you know. And uh, sometimes I feel like we just like attach friend to anybody that we just see regularly. Yeah. We're like, oh, I see this person at work every day. I see this person at church every week. Therefore, they're my friend. But you've never actually talked to that person outside of wherever you're at. Um, so, like, are they really your friend? Now, I think it's okay to say, like, oh, you're work friends. Like, because you're specifying, like, we are friendly at work. But otherwise, like, we're not actually, like, friends like that. You know what I mean? And there's people who, like, you can meet in these spaces that actually will become friends. Like, And, you know, that's a good thing. But sometimes I feel like we just, like, throw that word around on everybody. 
And then it makes it less special when you actually do have friends, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. And I find myself thinking about this often when I'm, like, um, discussing a situation that happened with a person to another person and how I, would like, refer to them will show if they're actually friends. So if I say, oh, me and my friend, me and my coworker, me and my business associate, like, I don't just say, oh, me and my friend were out here if they're actually not friends. Like, you got to, I, I, I take it very seriously. I guess that's all I got to say. I've also noticed, uh, pay attention to how people introduce other people because that's very telling as to what they want that relationship to be represented as to other people. Mm. Like, have you ever had someone introduce you to someone and, and they didn't know what to say? Like, this is my, uh, uh, well, this is a, and they kind of just like say the name. Mm. This is, that's, <laughs> that's awkward, bro. Well, see what I do? I've got this PR down to a science. This, now, this obviously Gabe is my friend, right? But say Gabe, we weren't friends. That's all I say. I'm introducing you to Gabe. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Matt, I'd like to introduce you to Gabe. We went to high school together. Hi, how you doing? Simple. We coach basketball together. That's all I got to say. I just say, like, what our mutual, like, where we basically, like, where we establish some type of relationship. That's all I would say. Now, if I was introducing you and he is friends, like, that's how I actually would introduce you. Be like, hey, this is my friend Gabe. We do the podcast together. We do X, X, Y, Z, you know? And But see, I started with, this is my friend. Otherwise, I just wouldn't say it. I usually don't say the word friend at all. I usually say, this is my dog, this is my bro, this is mm. my boy. Okay. That means that's like, I feel like, well, actually, let me ask you. <laughs> when we say like, <clears throat> my guy, my, guy. my dog, my homie, mm -hmm. is that like, Deeper than friend, or is it just, or is it a way to not say friend? I feel like I have a lot of friends, but only a few brothers. That's real. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, if you if you cool to me, I'm cool to you. Like, I'm I can be cool with anybody. Mm. Um, it's just you know being cordial, being friendly to somebody. But if I let's say I meet somebody and I just got a gut feeling about them. Like, I always trust my gut in this type of situation. Like, if I just got a gut feeling like I won't, like, be cool with you in that way, like, I'm not the type of person to be friendly with somebody I just don't vibe with. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I will be cool, like, say what's up to you, but then, like, I'm not going to put myself in a position where, like, we're constantly around each other in, like, the same event or venue or something like that. So, it's like, if we're at a party, and let's say this dude... Let's call him Trace, okay? Trace comes up to me, and I just got a bad feeling about Trace. Like, if something in my gut's telling me, like, oh, I just don't vibe with them, then I'll say, what's up, Trace? And then, like, I'll just be somewhere else on the party. How do you determine that? It's a gut feeling, man. Mm. Yeah, I've trusted it. I've trusted it over the years. It's never steered me wrong. Mm. All right. <clears throat> let's talk about, let's give, let's, his name is Trace for now. Okay. All right. I'm so, rolling because this is a good topic. So let's say, like, this is this has happened to me. Let's say somebody, like, knows, like, a little bit about you, right? And, like, they just feel, like, so comfortable to just come up to you and say anything to you. And then, like, they bring up my girl. Oh, I'm, it's up. It's up. It's like, up. like, just don't just worry about switch. that. I don't, I don't know you like that, so don't try to know me like that. Come on. And that's just how I feel about it. I'm gonna leave it there. I see. See, there needs to be a gradual progression to where, like, yeah, you, even the prog the progression get cut off at a certain point. You don't. It's gotta need, be natural. Though. You don't never need to get to some points. I agree, but I'm just saying, like, it needs to be natural. Like, you can't just jump to a whole new level that like the other person isn't at yet. You know, you guys have to like feel it out. You know, and like sometimes, like a person like Trace will like want to be your friend like really bad. Or like want to be like hang out with you and it's just like no and it's okay and that no is okay because you don't have to be friends with everybody yeah and also like at this age right before most of us right most of us are not 
married. Most of us don't have any kids. We're all trying to figure out our careers and all that stuff. Like, we really don't have time to be making all these new friends, for real. Is that maybe that's just me though? And we don't have to cater to these new people as well. Cause I feel like a lot of people do that too. Like sometimes you don't need to feel included. Like sometimes you just don't need to be there. <laughs> like <laughs> I just like like I'm saying, bro. What are you saying? What was the last one that I said? We, we said basically we shouldn't have to baby adults. Yeah. Because I does feel that, like everybody does, wants to be included in everything now. Does that make us fake friends to not want to find the solution to that? Like, that's not our responsibility, would it be? No. See, it'd be fake if, like, you were telling, say, like, say you were, uh, instead of having the energy towards Trace, or you're just like, you're trying to cut it off, basically, or right? you're trying to put boundaries, and the person still keeps going. And you fake it, and you're like, you're trying to match that energy, but, like, in a fake way. Yeah. That's fake. That's fake. But, like, as long as you stay consistent on your side where you're kind of, like, boundaries and stuff, it'd be cool. You know I mean? Hey, if you're ever in that situation, I'm always short answers. Exactly. Right to the point. Get up through. See, Get ups through. See, if you try to remain, like, in a certain... T- radius to me based on fabricated relationship equity but the words but the respect is not there i'm gonna make it known what your position is like you're not gonna be able to fake your way through with me can't nobody fake their way through with me Mm. i'm gonna let you know this is how i view this and i need you to answer for it if you can't then i need you to go Mm -hmm. Cause I don't, I don't had experiences with infiltration in my in my circle, mm. and like you can't you can't let your network be weak. Mm. It's true. I was talking I was talking to Ronnie the other day. Shout out to Ronnie, one of Shout my, out Ron. my closest Ron. friends, all of our good friend Ronnie. Yes. And I was texting him the other day, and I was just telling him how grateful I am for him and for you guys. Like, cause I feel like I have an ironclad circle. Like. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like I have an ironclad circle where it's like everybody is benefiting one another. We can all trust each other, make each other better, mm-hmm. look out for one another, mm-hmm. and that's that's all I really need. Like I don't need friends that are just there just to have a large number of friends. Like mm-hmm. I don't want that, and that takes more energy. Like trying to maintain those relationships. Like like Gabe was saying earlier. I can go mad long without seeing you, and it'll be love when I see you. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel the need to consistently cater to you or your feelings just to make you feel like we still have a certain closeness in our bond. Because mm-hmm. we don't have to have that certain closeness in our bond for all of time. Right. Yeah. And with our friendship specifically, like we're not caring to each other's feelings or whatever, but I feel like I have experienced more of your guys's like emotional moments and like seeing your feelings more than I have anybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like I've been able to like process just like I've talked about a lot on the podcast already, just like processing emotions and feelings with people like with you guys in ways I don't do do with anybody else. And that's how I know like, Oh, this is a real friendship because I'm actually Mm -hmm. like thinking about things that I never would otherwise. And I feel, like, comfortable enough to say it. And, like, something that really makes my heart warm is when, you know, close friends will come up to, be, come up to me and be like, hey, like, uh, can I talk to you about something? Sure. And then it's, like, something super, like, close to them. Like, something that really matters. And you can tell, like, they're not confiding in everybody like this. And it just makes me feel special, mm. you know. And then I know, like, oh, man, I can trust you. To where I could do this with you too, uh, but you can't do that with everybody. That's true. And I feel like people you can't do that with. I don't know if you're really friends, or at least friends how I define it. Mm. But yeah, yeah. I feel like we've just built that closeness, so we have that two way bond. It's not just 
I can do this for you and you can't do it for me. Like, we have a relationship where we know, like, I care for you, you care for me type of thing. And we have that capability for vulnerability, which is great, and we can lift each other up. But another thing that I think makes us great friends is we can cook each other. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys do not cater to my feelings. Like, y'all have called me out on stuff, and I've been so grateful for it. And I feel comfortable enough to call you guys out on stuff and hope that you take it in a way that it'll edify you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that you do that with people that aren't your friends because mm -hmm. you kind of almost don't want to overstep sometimes mm -hmm. unless it is affecting you, like I said. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. If someone is, like, disrespecting me or, like, right, doing case. something that, that I can't tolerate, then I'll feel the right to speak on it. Mm -hmm. But if it's just something in their life, I feel like I would be transferring over to their world to try to fix mm. something for them and mm. like you can't do that with everybody yeah it's not your responsibility to try to do that with everybody mm -hmm. and they didn't give you access to that exactly yeah you, you're overstepping yeah in that in that case well again that's how you know you have a genuine friends when they can like call you out on something and you take it to heart mm -hmm. you know because if some random person who's not really your friend tries to tell you you're doing this wrong or you need to check up on this. You're like, who are you? Like, I don't, I don't know you like that. Mm -hmm. But again, if it's one of you guys, even if I don't agree with it, I have to sit back and think about it. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Give it, give it, give it some thought. Like, maybe I am. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I respect, because I respect you guys, and also I trust your judgment on me. You know, so. Yeah, even if even if you don't agree with it, you give it the respect to think it over and get to the point where you're like. I don't agree with this, and this is why, mm. so that we can still have understanding between each other. Yeah. And then it's like, it's not like hostile in any type of way. It's always just love at the end of the day. And I feel like I've, most people can like, can stray that line, or what's it, what's it that? Straddle the line? Straddle the line, straddle the fence, or whatever. Yeah. Like, I feel like people can show, try to show love, but in a way that's not loving most of the time and through their friendships and i feel like that's when like friends just grow apart when that love isn't there that mutual love or maybe just the friendship was never really real hmm. i'm getting deja vu as we're talking about this right now i mean we say the word mutual a lot. no no not mutual. i got deja vu when you said that we say that like every five no 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 but the deja vu of talking about like whatever you were just saying That was so weird. But I feel like we had this exact conversation off camera before. Dude. I think we have. I, I I was thinking that too. I mean, we have a lot of these conversations. Yeah, yeah. Off but like those exact words almost. It was so weird. Dude, I get deja vu a lot. Like to the point where I feel like I can see the future sometimes. <gasps> That's so raven. That's, That's crazy. so raven, bro. That's so raven. It's the future. I can see. That's so raven. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's hey. so raven. Hey. That's so raven. It's been hey. a hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Hey. Yeah, that's me. Hey. Hey. Yeah, that's me. Hey. Hey. Yeah, that's me. Hey. 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 We we we're going to hey, be in the wrong place boom. doing that one day. And gonna <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe down below. And let us know who your fake friend is. <laughs> <laughs> Tag him. Tag him. <laughs> Share this post. Share it. With your oh, my friend. gosh. Oh, no. Oh, man. Okay, we, I feel like we got to go in on, like... The idea of fake friends and how they happen in life. Now, obviously, oh well, not obviously. For me personally, uh, I don't care enough to like really think about people who I feel like have been fake friends in my life. Um, I'm sure in my my youth that I've been a fake friend to somebody. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, we we grow up, we mature. True. Um, but just like I guess, like in adult life. Um, what are fake friends in adulthood and what kind of cases do you see often? Can I just, I, I just want to point out, because I feel like we've been 
kind of harping a little bit on like intentional serpents. Yeah. But a lot of the time, serpents. a lot of the time, and I've experienced a lot of this, mm. some people will will actually think that they are your friends and you'll think that they're your friends, but you just don't realize that you're operating on a what have you done for me lately type of mm. agreement mm. where it gets to the point where if your circumstances change and you don't provide a certain thing for them anymore, then the relationship kind of fades and, and maybe neither of you really understands why, but it's just because the foundation was, ba- it was conditional. Which, does that necessarily mean it's fake? Which, no. No, but I, w- I would say that you weren't friends. Yeah. Not that not that friendships are unconditional. Cause <clears throat> we've already, we went into that on the last <clears throat> episode. But it's just very specific terms that are are honestly unreasonable if you're talking about a real mm-hmm. relationship. And when those terms change, there is no more relationship. Mm. Well, what if the terms are simply time and place? Like you just happen to be around this person a lot and then you become friends. I wouldn't say that's fake. I wouldn't say that that's... It's not like you weren't friends at some point. It's just like you move on in life to like a different space but i i would say it depends because because once again i'm not saying maliciously like they're not trying yeah to i'm be not saying like a fake friend or deceive you but it's like i think we i don't know if we had this conversation but like say oh i think uh with bryson haynes shout out coach b i think he was talking about like if you're friends with someone and like the only hanging out that y'all do is <coughs> you go to like parties, try yeah, to get girls yeah. together, mm-hmm. and then one of you gets married, yeah. and then y'all don't have a friendship anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because your friendship was predicated just on this. Like, mm-hmm. he was my wingman. Like, he was mm-hmm. helping me get something, and now that I no longer want that product or result, he's right. of no use to me. Did y'all really have a friendship? So, really, what you're talking about is, like, a one-dimensional friend, mm. you know? Like, I again, like I don't, I, yeah, I don't think, like, it's, like, you're not friends, it's just your friendship is so shallow. Mm. So... Yeah. And again, this is I this episode in my mind was gonna be so negative. We're about to just be like harping on fake friends. But like I feel like we've just been talking about what makes good friends, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, but what makes you guys great friends is we have a lot of overlap into many different areas of our lives that we actually care about each other in. It's not just like we're only friends because we do the podcast or we're only friends because we go to church together. No, we like care about so many layers of our our lives so and it helps that we're funny as heck yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and handsome oh mm-hmm. absolutely wealthy i claim it come on hey speak it mm-hmm. this is my season for, grace, for favor this is my season to what I think I heard somebody singing that the other day. Oh my gosh, you know what? The <laughs> and, and I, I almost wanted to join in with him. No, what, what happened? happened? I was in Mark's on Sunday, and uh, this lady was in line, and she was like, I searched all over. And I walked past the line, and I was like, couldn't find nobody. Hey. And then she was like, hey. I searched high She's and low. Hey. Yeah. Still, <laughs> Still couldn't find nobody. nobody. And then I walked away. But nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. But that was like that was like such a spiritual moment right there. Like and y'all bonded. We bonded in the in the store. It was so nice. She was like an old like auntie type. It was great. Uh-huh. I feel like I see this a lot, like, just on the internet. A lot of times, and I'm not trying to go in on anybody at all. I'm just saying I observe this a lot. A lot of 20 to 30-something-year-old, 20 to 35-year-old single women, usually, uh, I feel like they talk about fake friends a lot. Like, oh, this person did me wrong. This person did that, this, whatever. And like, and like, 
I'm sure that's very real to them. Like, I'm not like saying that that's bad or whatever. I'm just saying like, what is going on in those friendships that makes you like tweet this or put this on Instagram stories? Like, you know, well, when folks put on their Instagram stories and you can definitely tell they're talking about somebody, yeah. like, what's the point of that? Like, I just wonder what's going on in these people's lives for them to like say that. I'm going on a rant. That doesn't make any sense. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Do you observe this at all, ever? Of course. Of course. Do you have that? Of course. I don't like that. Of course. Of course. There we go. Um, so what you're saying is, hoes will be hoes. No, that's not at all what I'm <laughs> saying. I'm hearing a little bit. No, it has nothing hearing, to do with bro. them, like, and their, those decisions. I'm saying among themselves. That's usually what starts it, bro. <laughs> Is it? I mean, no, well, that's what I'm asking. No, that's what I'm asking. Like, what She's is like, it? Where were you t- Tuesday night? <laughs> is that what happens? That's what I'm wondering. Like, hey, yo. <laughs> okay, well, that's what that's the answer to my question that I was basically asking. Like, what is going on that makes them like turn on each other like that? This could be its own whole episode, but no, because I don't have enough. Insight. We need we need women to talk about this because yeah. I'm not going on that ledge. But that's kind of what I was talking about with what have you done for me lately, though? Like, like a lot of people, the relationship is only built off of what I can get by being in proximity to you. Hmm. Okay, and. For men, what do you think it usually is? Business opportunities, maybe? Women? Women. Mm. Well, a couple things. Let's lay this out. Women. Status. Mm. Opportunity. Y'all got any? (laughs) This is for men. Yeah. Mm. I feel like those are the top three. Yeah. In that order? High key. Maybe the status one. They're kind of, they kind of all work in conjunction though. So I don't, I, I wouldn't mm-hmm. know how to rank them. Wait, say, say them all again. Women, money, and, did I say money? No, I no, said no. Women, you said women's, no, women's status, status opportunity. Well, I wasn't putting them in the order. Oh, so women, opportunity, status. See, I would say status one because with status comes women. And opportunity. Yeah. And infrastructure. With opportunity (laughs) comes women a lot of times. They're all interchangeable. That's why I just said they all work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, For women, men. Or women, you never know, in 2023. Shoot. Trey, can I just get through the list? I'm sorry, I just had to... Of course. Same. For women, it, I would say men, attention. <laughs> Talk about it. And this one. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it in 4K. Validation of their poor life choices. I love it. Let's get canceled. <laughs> Round two. Let's go. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> it. Say it one more time. <laughs> All I need is one more time. No, but honestly, We've broken a song so many times. What? We've broken a song a lot of times throughout this episode. Yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. That's our thing. But um, I feel like a lot of women use each other to validate their poor life choices. It's like, mm. if I have a support system to to keep my negativity afloat and not check me and hold me accountable on these decisions, then it makes it quite easy to keep doing it. Mm. You know why? A lot of immature people, not just saying women, just immature people in general, oh. they don't like accountability at all. That's why the people that surround themselves with don't hold them accountable. And they stay in them cycles of failure. For a long time. So I agree with what you're saying. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's why... Oh. Well... Do it. That's why a lot of times... Women... In those circles... They travel in packs. 
Because when they make a bad decision, they can all hype each other up like, yes, go queen, go girl. Doing bad stuff that's <laughs> detrimental to their lives. Men don't need that. Now, men sometimes do that. Men but do that. They do that. I'm not, <laughs> but they don't, I don't Quite think they often. need it. Men will go solo and make bad decisions. Uh, yeah, because they'll get depressed otherwise. I think they need it. Mm. They need, like you said, the validation. So, but more than validation, like I put validation at the bottom of the list. I think attention is number one mm. because women love attention um, from women and men. Yeah. Um, they just love attention. So, yeah. Honestly, shoot, it might be, a, it might be attention, validation, then men, at the bottom. I'm. I, I can I roll, roll. I can roll with that. I can roll with that. Yeah, I I feel like now this might be a hot take, and this could be a good or bad thing, honestly, for women. I love a good hot take. Uh, I feel like women don't want men as much as men want women. Like I feel like it's not until some of the decisions start catching up with them, and they get a little older, when they start thinking, you know what, I think I really want a man. Depending on their circles. I feel mm-hmm. like women are actually content not having a man for a while. Men, I feel like, want a woman, like, way earlier on. Maybe that's just my observation, though. Yeah. Early on, yeah, I would agree. I feel like I feel like once uh, it starts getting close to too late, they change that. What are you doing? Oh, bad, bro. I was trying, trying to push my mic in my face. <laughs> no, I was trying to... Was... Mess with this little <laughs> circle thing. Speak up. But, um, stop. <laughs> <laughs> jump you. <clears throat> I feel like women. Ah, uh, hell, this is so bad. I love it. <laughs> Page oh, women. Bro. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you didn't even need the voice changer. Of course not. Wow. Okay. Uh, I feel like women. Why is it on me? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like women oftentimes. When they get to the point that Dre brought up, uh, later in life, I feel like they want to settle down. I feel like men earlier in life are kind of more in that pursuit for like something stable. Because I feel like I feel like I feel like men are simple. Like we we kind of have a good understanding of what we want. Mm. Like, Mm. That comes with that comes with maturity, of course. But it's yeah. like, but I feel like comparing men to women, I feel like men more often have a better idea of what we want earlier. Personal opinion. Yeah, maybe I'm just thinking about me. I don't know. No, I mean <laughs> that's how it should be. But we should. But I don't know if that's always the case. But yeah, but not you're not saying it's always the case either. So yeah, there's a, there's <clears throat> a lot of immature men that think. That they're never gonna want that because they just want to be boys and run around for their entire lives. Ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Or they just they just don't know what they want because they don't have enough maturity, direction, experience, whatever the case is. But mm. I don't know. Hmm. I think that. I think that people. Like, the maturity levels, like, aren't based on gender. They aren't based on, like, how you're born or anything. I think that really it's about, like, your environment and the people you surround yourself with. Because there's a lot of very mature men and a lot of very mature women who are really about their business and, like, aren't doing all that immature stuff. Because they surround themselves with people who are also like that. But they're... Okay, there are men and women, almost boys and girls, who surround themselves with low vibration people, and they wonder why. They're 35, two kids, no ring, no house, lots of debt, and they're just trying to get their lives together. Well, they acted like kids for 15 years. Shoot, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about that in the whole episode, though. <laughs> What's your take? Now, my take is not contrasting to your take. It mm-hmm. is complimentary. Okay. Oh, he's looking at the camera for this. The men. The men out there 
Because like you were saying about your maturity level will, to a degree, dictate the type of people you're around, the type of people around you. To the men out there talking about all these women are this, all these women are that, you ever wonder why you keep ending up in environments with those type of women? Talk about it. Maybe it's because you're that type of man. Oh! No. Oh! Gosh. Emotional oh. damage! No, no, we're real rap though. Like, and I did this for mad long. Like, I, I always try to put it on me because that's the story I know is my story. I, for a very long time, was talking about, man, all these women are this, all these women are that. I'm just, I'm just gonna stick to myself because these women keep bringing this and that and the third to me. But I was the one bringing those women to me. Mm-hmm. And I was the one putting myself in those environments with that type of women. So when I changed the type of man I was, the type of environments I was in, the type of habits that I practiced, I started to find a whole different brand of women. Mm. So instead of trying to put the blame on everybody else, how about we take some accountability? Come on. Uh, bro, there's a lot of people on the planet. Not True. all women, no. not all, not all <laughs> men, not all men are terrible. You said all men twice. <laughs> not all women, not all men are terrible. Like you said, you just got to surround yourself with the right type of people, right? Be the kind of person that you want to attract, you know? So if you are a bum, you will attract bum. <sighs> Opposites do not attract in that sense. So, yeah, there's so many people. Like, that's all I got to say. I've I've discovered that to a degree, you attract you. Mm -hmm. You concur? I concur. We're so off topic. So off topic. The title is going to have to be episode. like fake friends, something like it's going to be comma something like a lot of stuff. Um, I think it's something creative. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see how we can tie this all back together to fake friends so we can wrap it up. That point, though, about that, that goes with like romantic partners, but also with your friends, like. And this is kind of what I was telling uh, that young man the other day about uh, this this young man. Trace? No. (laughs) Someone else. He was asking for advice because he's about to go off to college about, like, just having a community that could uplift him and finding, like, Christian friends and whatnot. And I told him the best way is to be a light in those environments so that people can recognize your light. Because if you're fitting in with everyone who's living for the world, then people that could help encourage you and lift you up and you could do the same for them, they're never going to find you or notice you because they're going to think you're just one of the regular folks like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So with finding good friends that can tighten your circle, strengthen you, that can pour into you, you can pour into them, and same goes for like a romantic partner. It's all about you living your life and keeping certain habits that, like, you want to attract in other people. Mm. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, just with the the concept of, like, fake friends in mind and just kind of how this episode has gone, it's just a reminder, like, don't even waste your energy thinking about or dwelling on fake friends and bad friends, just be a good friend Thanks. and surround yourself with Thanks. other good friends. <clears throat> so you're not going to deal with all that nonsense, you know? So, yeah. I agree. Just got to be, you. if you're a good person to other people, people will be good back to you. Like, it's just the way it goes. It's Usually, usual. yeah. 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 Sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but that just means, like, God wanted to give you some character work. Mm. It's true. It's mm-hmm. a big one. Is that game? Might be game. Now, real quick. Hey, I know a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Come His on. name is Jesus, our mutual friend. Come on. The mutual friend. Mm. Oof. 
Hey. 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 Oh. When he do it? He did. God did. God did. Just want to leave our audience with something real quick from a uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Identify them fake friends. Get them away from you. Keep them out your circle. And don't be a bad friend yourself. And tag that fake friend <laughs> at the bottom of the video. Share this post oh, with 30 God. fake friends. <laughs> if you know a fake friend, tag them on this video and tell them to send it to five other people they know that are fake. All right, let's get all the phonies out here laid out on display so we know who fake and who not. All right, well, I thought that was a successful episode. <laughs> all right. Have y'all not seen that? No. Oh. I've heard that before. I've heard that before. All I just right, wasn't Patreon. expecting it. <laughs> I was not expecting it. Patreon. Cutting that out. What are you talking about? Not for Patreon. All the whole thing. Oh my keep no. that, hey, hey, keep that part. Send it to me. <laughs> well, everybody. Oh shoot. This has been the uh, whoa, whoa, mutual whoa. music. Man, I try to get music. Away. Fake love by Drake. That's my uh. Yeah. Go on. Let's see. Tell me again And we'll be lovers and friends Tell me again And we'll be lovers and friends Well I don't know if I've suggested this song already because y'all know I, I done suggested a whole lot of Brian Courtney Wilson. But that man's music is just so phenomenal. So another banger coming at you from Brian Courtney Wilson. This song is called The Promise. And it is talking about the promise that our mutual friend has made concerning our lives. I'm dead. Okay. I already gave one. Wait, what were you doing? Fake Love by Drake. Uh, you were serious. Yeah. <laughs> to get on that clip. Oh, sure. My song suggestion for all of you people out there. Uh, you people. You people. I beg your pardon. Yo, can we get Dr. Umar on the show? Dr. Umar, bro. What Come pleasure? on, bro. The reparation money. We have a black man with a white girlfriend. Come, come, yes. to, come, speak to come him. Cook me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything good. So here it is. Here's my song suggestion. We're blessed by Fred Hammond <laughs> because we are blessed. Okay, in the Everybody spirit. Blessed. And today, that was our episode. I am gay. Oh, I am Matt. No, you were supposed to keep it going so like the music could be in the background when we do the outro. But you were, uh, we gotta say you were supposed to. Keep I it going. am you Dre. You were supposed to say your but name I, and then get back to the music. So I else am Dre. Your name. I am Dre. I'm <laughs> 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 Dre. Wait, <clears throat> how are we doing this, bro? Everybody say bless, 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 bless. bless, bless, bless. I'm Dre. Bless. Bless. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's so difficult. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Mm. Mm. I'm Drake. Mm. I don't even know if the camera mm. was on you when you said mm. it. Hold on. Mm. Oh, mm. you go first. Who, who's going? You go. Down the mm. line. Mm. I'm Matt. Mm. Mm. I'm Dre. Mm. Hey. I'm Gabe. Yeah. Mm. And mm. this has been mm. and we're. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>